Welcome back to the channel. It's Totally Cody here back with another TV show reaction. And today we are going to be continuing Fresh Prince of Bel-Air with part five of season one. Last video was very, very good. I very much enjoyed watching, um, especially the Thanksgiving episode. Like I said at the last video, it was my favorite episode so far. Um, maybe not of the entire season, but definitely one of the top three. We got to meet Will's mom. Will's mom made some pretty arguable points about Vivian and um, Uncle Phil, the way that they raised their kids and everything. I understand that it was a little hurtful for her to say that, but you know what? Honestly, I agree with her. Every child needs to learn what it's like to grow up. And it's not like they're, you know, young, young kids. Like Carlton and Hillary and Will, they're all in high school and stuff. They need to be learning more values like that on how to take care of themselves and stuff because eventually they're not gonna be living in the house anymore and they're gonna have to learn how to take care of themselves. So I do appreciate the way that she did that. And, you know, I'm glad that it ended on a happy note that it wasn't like, oh, the two sisters are mad at each other now. I'm glad that they kind of worked that out and they actually figured everything out. Um, I'm excited to see where the rest of the season goes, honestly, because it's been so good so far. It really has. And I'm glad that I chose to do this show because it's just been, it's been a ride so far. So I hope you guys enjoy this reaction. If you'd like to watch my full length reaction to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air on my Patreon, go ahead and check for the link down in the description of this video, okay? Thank you guys so much for joining me and now it's time to sit back, relax, and watch TV show together. Let's go ahead and continue The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> Jeffrey has turned cleaning into an art form. <laughs> I swear I was watching the Flintstones on ice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm pleased that I've amused you, Master William. It is the least I can do, given the hours of merriment I have derived from looking at the remarkable way your ears protrude from your head. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey got -A, jokes. Butler with an attitude. So anyway, Tony's coming over. We're going to study for our history midterm together. She really needs some help. But she's not doing well? Daddy, Tony is a dear, dear friend of mine, but she lacks concentration. I mean, she totally gave up on Twin Peaks. Didn't you just hear me ask first? I guess you're right. Besides, I'd feel better knowing you had the car, especially if you're going to be out again until 3 in the morning. Oh, my God. 3 in the morning? Well, that's what time you got in last night. <gasps> Oops, did I say that? <laughs> Hillary. On a school night. I'm doing a term paper on owls. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Will, you've broken curfew entirely too many times. You are grounded for a week. A whole week? Maybe you'll find enough time to do your own dishes instead of paying Ashley. <gasps> Oops again. Oh my God, Hillary. <laughs> two weeks. I'm grounded for two weeks? That's right. You're to stay in this house and you're not to go anywhere near that car. Can he still rent the car to Jazz? <laughs> oops, oops, what oops. is going on? Let's make it an even month. Hillary, you well, suck. I don't know my own strength. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. Revenge. Yeah. I, one time I'm going to agree with that. Miss Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi. Sorry I'm late. I saw a lady wearing a sweater so ugly I was forced to pull over and yell at her. <laughs> my God. Hi, Tony. Where are you two up to? The library. Big history exam. How'd your English midterm go? I think I did great, Mom. A library? I thought we were going shopping. We are. I was just saying that to her. Come on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Will. <laughs> Will's here. Oh, no. <laughs> He's like a shark. What's this I hear, Hillary? I feel that revenge is within my reach. Probably. This is a job for Sherlock Homeboy. Let's see what happens. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi, is this Tony Gower's room? Oh, yeah, we're her roommates. I'm Kimmy. I'm Cindy. I'm Will. Hi, Willie. <laughs> Actually, I'm trying to find Hillary Banks. There's been a family emergency. Sorry, we don't know her. Yes, we do. You know, Tony's friend. The one who never wears anything twice. Oh, yeah, duh. Here's the key. I just haven't seen her around much since she dropped out of school. Oh, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, the midterms must have been a little too much for her. Midterms? Hillary dropped out three months ago. Oh, my God. Well, down the emergency. Is it, like, a big one? It's about to be. It's even bigger than I thought. <laughs> when President Bush said he would never raise taxes, was he lying or just kidding? <laughs> Sorry, I'm what? late. Time flies when you're studying. It was great. I got a lot of work done on my physics research paper. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, no, I was just thinking about that funny thing that happened to you today. What are you talking about? Today, after school was out, I went to UCLA and I sat in the back of Hillary's physics class. You did? <laughs> well, yeah, you remember. I mean, after all, you were in the class. <laughs> well, Will sat in the back of my physics class and... <laughs> Well, while he was there, <laughs> Will, you tell it so much better. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I snuck up behind Hillary, right? And, well, her head must have been full with all that studying or something. Because when she saw me, she said my head looked like the basic element of physics. <laughs> <laughs> and what was that technical term again? A quark, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> I said it was a quark. <laughs> or was it a neutron? Right, right. <laughs> no, it was definitely a quark. Well... That was a real scream, Will. <laughs> Dinner is served. What do you know? I know that the basic element of physics is matter. And if you were going to do a research paper, you'd probably have to know something they taught on, I don't know, the first day. How did you find out? Well, I have my methods. And it helps that Tony's roommates have the combined IQ of a raisin. <laughs> I'll do anything you want. Just name it. Okay, well, thanks to you, I'm grounded for the next month. And all I want from you is that you make that month as pleasant as possible. At the risk of sounding redundant, dinner is served. <laughs> I'll be right there, Jeffrey. Jeffrey doesn't mess around with his job, man. He knows. Uh, Hillary? What? Carry me. Have you done His Highness's laundry? Yes. Yes, Your Highness. <laughs> what, you forgot His Highness overalls, his T-shirt, and... Oh, no. <laughs> of course, his pair of lucky draws. You're going to want to hand wash these. I am not hand washing your drawers. Oh, yes, you are. And from now on, you will pronounce the word draws. I can smell that. For some reason, I can smell that. I don't okay, know why. Fine. His Highness would like you to read him a bedtime story. This is getting really annoying, Will. Hokey dokey, have it your way. Uncle Phil, I'm here! <laughs> His Highness would like you to read this Spider-Man comic book. The yellow box says, high above Manhattan, and Spider-Man goes, my spider sense is buzzing like a beehive. Uh, His Highness would like you to describe everything in the picture. <laughs> okay, he's sitting on the edge of some stupid building. He's doing and too much. There are like wavy lines coming out of his head. So, so what? He's hot, or his head smells, or something? <laughs> anyway, uh, Hillary, that's his spidey sense. At last we meet again. <laughs> and his raspier. At last we meet again. Oh, come on, baby, you dogging it. At last we meet again! <laughs> you have amused us, but first, His Highness would like to be tucked in. Well, I'm you're kidding. doing too much now. Yeah, of course I'm kidding. Uncle Phil! <laughs> nice and tight. I'm surprised that man has not come too barging tight. into the room. Want you to suffocate. <laughs> oh, and uh, before you go, a list of things to do tomorrow night at the dinner table. Like oh, what? God. Da, da, please, we do not wish them red in our presence. Be gone. Please, Carlton, I need help. I'm coming to you because I know how much you don't like Will. Will Smith is a fine young man. <laughs> oh, Martha, Carlton, you're talking to me now. We've let Will wreak havoc in our lives for too long, and now I think it's time to band against him. Oh, his no. And I just want to punish him. I'm very vindictive, I'm just not imaginative. <laughs> Hillary, whether or not I want to punish Will, and for the record, I haven't come out pro or con. Why are you so mad at him? First of all, I dropped out of college. Hillary? I know, I know. Mom and Dad are gonna kill you. I know, but the worst thing is Will found out, and now he's using it to make me do all kinds of humiliating things. Like what? 
He's making me clean his sneakers. Really? It gets worse. I have to hand wash his lucky draws. Disgusting. Oh, and this is his latest. That's awful. Is he making you clean his room? No. Will you clean mine? <laughs> The table flipped. Oh, Why, you little Dad. I hate you. <laughs> this is horrible. Be that as it may, this I is want horrible. these debate cards typed by tomorrow morning. Oh no. Today was career day, and Travis's dad came in to speak to us. Really? What does he do? Joan Rivers. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, he's a plastic surgeon. <laughs> oh, okay. Dinner is served. <laughs> Might want to hurry up. You don't want you don't oh, want Jeffrey Hillary. to be redundant again. What? Did you memorize that little list of things I gave you to do at dinner tonight? Yes. Well, just to be on the safe side, let's have a little pop quiz. Anytime anyone says Hillary, what do you do? I bark like a dog. <laughs> oh my God. It's right. <laughs> See you at dinner. Well, if you have an ounce of compassion, you'll let me off the hook. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Nah, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hillary. Yes. It's dinner time. Did you memorize our list? Yes. My God. Well, let's just review. What do you do when I hit my glass with my spoon? I insult Will. Good. And what do you do when I clear my throat? I smack Will upside the head. <laughs> Damn it, you're prepared. Let's go. <laughs> For these gifts I never would have thought, I never would have thought Carlton Amen. would do this. Amen. I see it every day. Don't you, Hillary? <laughs> Did you say something, sweetie? No. Will Smith is perfect. <laughs> Your mother was trying to say something, and I'm sure she would appreciate it if she weren't interrupted again. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, as I was saying, Will Smith is the king of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. Will Smith is the scum of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> this is too much. However, Will Smith is the pinnacle of manliness. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, can we stop? Yeah. I dropped out of school. You dropped out of school? When did this happen? Three months ago. Three months ago? And you've been lying to us since then? Three months ago? If you'll just let me explain. Three months ago? <laughs> I'm not interested. Thanks a lot, Will. <laughs> Man, they've been in there for an hour. I wonder what Hillary told mom and dad about our part in all this. Yeah. I think it's pretty. You should be worried about that. Sang like a canary. We can punch holes in our credibility. <laughs> mom Carlton's dad, evil. Awfully sad about what happened to Hillary. Hope her crazy lies don't drag down anyone else. <laughs> Carlton. Sit. Maybe we haven't been clear enough about the rules of this house. You are not to blackmail other members of this family. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Will. You two are grounded for a month. And Will, added to the month that you already have, that should pretty much take you into fiscal 91. <laughs> Dad, you are excused. I don't know, Philip. I have been thinking. About what? You know, what Hillary said when she was alone with us. You know, that, that I've put too much pressure on her, that it's hard living up to a mother who's a college professor, that I made her feel well? that she could never come to us and admit that she failed. Mom, Dad, can I say something? Yes. I've been thinking, and I decided that I'll do whatever you want me to do to make things better. And exactly what would that be? I don't know, whatever you want me to do. Hillary, that's the problem. It's about what, what you want to do. Decisions for you. 
You're 21 years old. It's time for you to make your own decisions. If you weren't getting anything out of college and you wanted to drop out, you should have told us and not try to hide it like a little kid. We just want you to be all you can be. You want me to join the army? No. <laughs> that would be interesting. Let's try this again. <laughs> Hillary, what do you want to do with your life? Exactly. I guess I'll have to think about it. Well, while you're thinking about it, you're going to get yourself a job. Okay. Good night. Mom, Dad, what kind of job do you want me to get? Whatever you can get. <laughs> she missed the whole point of it, but you know what? I get this. I get it. She's been trying to live up to expectations forever. I'm not talking to you. Hey, look, straight up. I didn't know you was going to break down like that. I mean, you walk around here like nothing bothers you. An hour ago, you were ready to tell on me. <laughs> Hillary, you tripping. I wasn't never going to tell on you. Really? Come on, of course not. How about you, Carlton? We're dealing in hypotheticals here. <laughs> Fine, I wasn't going to tell. Does that little placebo make either of you feel any better? And I guess I brought this whole thing on myself. I mean, if I hadn't gotten you grounded, you wouldn't have blackmailed me. So I've learned my lesson and we're even. But then again, though, you oh, know, hey. if, you know, if he didn't do that, though, you wouldn't have had that good moment where you learned that you need to do things for yourself and not for other people. It's a very important life lesson to learn. I'm just I'm glad she learned it early on. You know, most people don't ever learn it in their lifetime. Oh, before you go. As my last official act of servitude, I did finish your laundry. Wow. I, I can't believe I made you do that. I I'm sorry. It's okay. What's done is done. Nah, she made your underwear pink. Hillary! <laughs> my lucky draw! Oh! <laughs> she got him good. Come on. I, I hate that Hulu does this. It doesn't put the border away. You and me both. It's Will and Hillary. Open up. <laughs> oh, no. We're all going to die. <laughs> we just wanted to say goodnight. We're going to bed just as soon as we finish this frog leg soup. Sasha, they're eating Ferdinand. Ferdinand? This is a guy frog? <laughs> <laughs> Nighty night. Don't let the snails bite. Snails. That's funny. I thought she said she put snakes in your sleeping bag. Psych, <laughs> psych. Will, will you tell us a scary story before you go, please? Okay, but I hope everybody's ready to be scared to death. Yes. Oh wait, hold up. Scream for me one time. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. <clears throat> okay. I got a scary story, but I have to warn you, it's really, truly frightening. It happened to a guy named Will Bert. Yeah, Wilbert Smith. Sonian. See, Wilbert Smith Sonian grew up in Philly. He went to school in the hood, right? But this school he went to was so tough. I mean, it was graffiti everywhere. It all happened right here in Bel Air when Wilbert was transferred to a private school. It was a living nightmare. <sighs> Enter as boys, leave as men. How long are they trying to keep us here? <laughs> hey, banker, what do you know? It's who you know that counts. Hey, Carl, it's an idea. So, Studmaster General, what's the word on co-ed tennis camp? I really got a lot out of it, amigo. Scored big on and off the court. <laughs> Way to play. I kid you not, Will. Women faint at this man's feet. Order eaters work for me. Outrageous. <laughs> this guy's seriously twisted. He gets in a good one now and then. Will Smith? Oh, Will, this is Simon Stanhope, our student council president. It's my job here to give you the tour. This is our founder. And those are the first students of the Bel Air Academy. And they all carve their names on this. What is this, Hogwarts? The alumni desk. <laughs> and these are the championship wars that we retired in 1957. Man, y'all don't throw nothing away. I'm Edward Fellows III, but call me Ned, okay? 
Okay. You've been assigned to my lit class, uh, so I read your records. I just wanted to say we're both coming from the same place. Oh, word up. You from Philly? Shaker Heights, Ohio. But when I was doing research on my main That's man, all the same place. and news, I lived in Harlem. Uh, where are all the fly honeys at? Fly honeys? Yeah, girls. Oh, Will, didn't anybody tell you this is an all-boys school? <laughs> and we'd like to take this opportunity to tell you new students to consider yourselves at home. Consider yourselves one of the family. We've taken to you so strong. It's clear we're going to get along. So then Wilbert saw their evil plan. They were trying to break them down. First, they told him it was an all-boys school. Then they tortured him with it half an hour of Broadway show tunes. Oh, no. But he wouldn't break. Then they went ballistic. Into the bloat. Five, four, three, two. I am Dr. Langford Oates. And you are... Alan Banks, Donna Fails, Hunt Lieberbaum, Smith, Smith, William Smith. Yo! Uh, Mr. Svensson? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Smith, how good of you to join us. Mr. Smith, look around. Uh, do you see any difference between yourself and the other young gentleman? <laughs> Is that like a trick question? <laughs> Hi, Mr. Smith. I don't the think that's how he meant it. Kindly consult that section of the rule book pertaining to neckwear. Buddy. And now, may we turn our attention to history. Thomas Paine once wrote... Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Smith, weren't you the bad guy in Goldfinger? <laughs> <laughs> It's a little something I put together. Yeah. <laughs> Smith! Ho! Listen, Cornflake. Ho is definitely not a word that you want to yell. I think the word you're looking for is yo. Yo? Yeah, it'll be easy to remember. It's like oi backwards. <laughs> All right. Yo! Oh, God. Will, may I have a word? You got something you want to say to me, man? Can you be serious for just one moment? <laughs> Will, this is your first day, and I think you are rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. Nothing you say is funny. I thought you it was like, funny, and I laughed. Class, I had a rolling. <laughs> the people who count were laughing at you, not with you. I mean it, Will. When you were snubbed, don't say that I did not warn you. Okay, here comes Chadney. Just lay low and watch how it's done. Are you free this weekend, Smitty? <laughs> My parents are throwing one of their big weekend bashes at our compound in Malibu. Badminton, the lobster boil, you know, the usual. The Chadster's Malibu bashes are legendary. Oh, yeah, Carlton, you should come too. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> I thought he was really going to take that statue out. Oh, no. no, Will. Don't do that one, though. Don't rick that. No! What are you doing? And I am telling you... <laughs> This sounded like Rasputia from Norbit. Oh my god. I can't unhear it. Master William. Hey man, you know what I could really go for right now? Some pad thai. Pad thai? By all means go. Might I recommend the gourmet deli on Roxbury? No, no, no. When I, when I said I could go for it, I, I mean, like, I want it. Like, you go for it. Well, Wilbur thought his first day at Bel Air Academy was a big success. And when he told his aunt and uncle, they were thrilled. 
Oh, this is a cause for celebration. Uh, Jeffrey, Will did well at school. This calls for champagne. There's been a tragedy at the school. The alumni desk has been cruelly and wantonly defaced. What happened? Oh, God. Someone carved the word fresh in it. And they <laughs> have a theory about the person who did it. The, the, they do? <laughs> they think it was a freshman who got halfway through and lost his cool. I, I can't keep up with this crazy teenage slang. <laughs> Day damn one, Vivian. Day damn one. <laughs> you thought you had the school all figured out. Oh, no. You didn't need my advice. All right, Carlton, what is your brilliant advice? I'll tell you. You've got to march straight into school tomorrow and confess. <clears throat> <laughs> There's such a thing as the honor code. There's such a thing as dog dumb, too. <laughs> You don't intend to tell them at all? Maybe on my deathbed. Then on your conscience be it. My God. Fingerprint analysis has shown it is the handiwork of our resident hoodlum, William Smith. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> uh, may we turn our attention to another important figure in American history, Dolly Madison. As Mr. Smith contends, the manufacturer of ring dings. <laughs> and in the short time we have left, I would like to address the infamous act of vandalism which occurred here yesterday. The desecration of our desk is indeed sad. So if any of you may know... He did it! <laughs> Wilbert was accused by his evil cousin, Carlton. I mean, Carlbert. Ah, but we're coming to the scary part. No, we're not. Poor Wilbert was brought to trial before the scariest monsters of all. Preppies. <laughs> <laughs> they are scary. Have you ever met them? As president of student council, I declare this tribunal in session. My cousin has committed a vicious crime. He could not be guilty. Oh, yeah, that's what I would have said. <laughs> the fact is, young Will has not yet developed the social skills to adapt to the rarefied atmosphere of Bel Air Academy. Ban him from all clubs, sports, special events. The Allegaroos. Oh, not the Allegaroos. <laughs> Probation is not enough. If Smith isn't expelled, it will be an invitation to anarchy. Fight the power. <laughs> this teacher is... Will, do you have anything to say? Well, yeah. I, I, I didn't think y'all was gonna get so mad for me writing my name on an old desk. Those guys, they carved their name in a new desk. They got their picture on the wall. <laughs> Well, that's totally different. The alumni carved their names so people would remember them as part of a school. That's why I did it. That's ridiculous. You're trying to ruin our school. I don't mean to diss you guys. But if Will's expelled, I'm leaving too. And, and, and I'm taking my dad's checkbook with me. I mean, Will did have a good compelling point. I hope you realize how lucky you were that you weren't kicked out of school. Lucky? I gotta work every day after school to pay off the desk repair. Before I cry myself to sleep. <laughs> May I leave you with a few words of advice? You come up with another brilliant idea for something to do at school? Stop. Do nothing. Just stand there, doing nothing, like a zombie. <laughs> Breathing just enough to keep the blood circulating. <laughs> and no more. Could you do that for me? Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Fal, I wasn't listening. What'd you say? <laughs> Yo, he's gonna kill him. <laughs> you took your punishment like a man. That's all you got to say to me? Good night. Carl, you 5 0 me, man. Excuse me? You dime me out. Pardon? You they already knew you did it. I... They already knew you did I it. You did it for your own good. You weren't going to tell. How do you know? 
You're not worried about my own good. You're just worried about yourself. It may seem like that to you now, but one day you will oh, look God, up. Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I know what this is about. Well, let me explain something to you. In this society, we have this silly little thing called order. And we have rules to preserve that order. If we let people break the rules, there would be chaos. Well, the more you cling to your old ways and refuse to listen to reality, the harder it's going to be for you to fit in with my friends. I don't think he wants you to fit in with your friends. You, man. I don't want your friends, all right? Yeah. Master William, I have been informed that due to your new after-school employment, you will no longer be requiring your customary four o'clock snack. Could this be true? Yeah, afraid so, G. I might not even get home till dinner time, if that early. <laughs> He's well, happy. <laughs> Out of curiosity, just what is the nature of your enforced labor? Oh, well, chin up. <laughs> <laughs> My man Wilbert in a kitchen with a hand that on his head. Yo, if that's not a scary thought, I don't know what is. <laughs> all right, so look, you all got to do me a favor. R raise your right hand. All right, I want your solemn promise that if any of you ever meets Wilbur Smithsonian, you won't tell him that I told you this story, okay? I swear, Wilbur Smithsonian. <laughs> Will's cold bust. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a Christmas no one episode. Made a for Santa. Whom shall I ask to help me, boys and girls? Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> ask the reindeer on your left hand. Hey, gee, I did not see that coming, man. Hey, this is dope, right, Ash? Oh. Ashley. I'm awake. I don't know why I bother. It's impossible to compete with tawdry entertainment like MTV, Nintendo, the new children on the block. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ash. Now I'll never know how the story ends. Pardon me for caring, but I really wanted to know what Santa got for Christmas. He doesn't get an actual gift, Will. He gets the love of all the little children in the world. Really? What a jip. <laughs> oh, come on, Will. Everyone knows there's no Santa Claus. There is no Millie Vanilli. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But there definitely is a Santa Claus. Okay, Ash, let's write our letters to Santa Claus. Will. Hey, look, here, you can help me with my list. How you spell Vanessa Williams? Will, don't you have anything better to do with Christmas vacation than writing a silly letter? I wish I had someone to play with, but every year my friends all go out of town with their families, and I'm stuck here all alone. Ashley, you can still do something to have fun while you're here. I'm going to. I've decided to learn a new word every day. Ashley, that's boring. Really? I think it's very autodidactic. Okay. Christmas vacation is finally here. God help me, I do love it so. Ash, I think Bel Air Academy is one of the best schools in the country. Its academics are excellent, its sports program is outstanding, and the faculty is first rate. But around about December 10th, it all starts to get a little old, know what I mean? Your sister, 10 years old and doesn't know the meaning of Christmas. I know the meaning of undulate. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this Christmas thing, Will, but I've got bigger fish to fry. I've got to raise 600 more dollars for my Glee Club ski trip. I've booked the Allegaroos to sing at a bunch of Christmas parties. So if we make enough money, on December 26th, we'll all be... <laughs> Imitating Jerry Lewis? <laughs> I've got to rehearse now. Five, six, five, six, seven, and... I saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus. <laughs> The mistletoe last night. She didn't hear me creep. She thought that oh, I. What the bloody hell kind of song is that? What do you mean? A little kid sees his mom tongue wrestling with Santa Claus? Oh, 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 I get it. I dress up like Santa Claus, you dress up like the Easter Bunny. That makes me sick. <laughs> We're trying to put together a musical program for Jonathan's parents' party tonight. Here's our program. Wait a minute. 
You don't bring me flowers. People who need people. The way we were. You gonna come down the chimney, Baba Streisand? <laughs> You've been to my parents' parties? Love, Hillary. XXX. <laughs> okay, now send the same thing to Kevin Costner, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Sting. <laughs> right. Thanks. <sighs> well, that takes care of the A-list. Hillary, I hate to inject some reality into these proceedings, but who are you trying to fool, baby? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, Hillary, you always walk around here fronting like you know all these famous people. You don't know nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, we're spending an hour at your office party, and then we're coming home. I have too many papers to grade. OK, OK, but first things first. Do you remember the names of all my partner's wives? Yes. OK, who is um, George Meyer's wife? Eunice. That was last year. The new wife's name is Kelly. The new wife? Kelly, Walter's secretary? Mm-hmm. Now, who is um, Jack Fitzgerald's wife? Doris. Wait a minute. How many new wives are going to be at this party? Well, let's just put it this way, Vivian. You're the only repeat. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, hold up. Hey, you guys going to a Christmas party? Well, it's just an office Christmas party. Man, I remember our Christmas parties back in Philly. Jingle bells and singing and laughing, then at the end of the evening, the traditional police sirens. <laughs> what days. Well, I'll just go bring the car around. Uh, hold on. Aunt Viv, does this neighborhood do anything special for Christmas? People in Bel Air don't even know how to celebrate Christmas. I I'm worried about Ashley. What do you mean? I mean, growing up in Bel Air, she never had a real Christmas. I mean, there's no sledding. There there there's no caroling. There's no winos making snow angels on the front lawn. And here's the beautiful crystal nativity your uncle gave me for Christmas years ago. What the heck? Where the little baby Jesus at? Right there. There's nothing there. No disc? There are more decorations coming. If you want to show Ashley a little more of the Christmas spirit, why don't you go to the shop, pick up the decorations, and then you and Ashley can decorate it yourself. Okay? Well, all right now. <laughs> hey, Ashley! Hey, yeah, this is gonna be hype, Aunt Viv. Hey, you have fun at the office Christmas party, too. Thanks, honey. I'm looking forward to meeting all the new wives. Were you vociferating for me? <laughs> I gotta get back to what? you on that. Um, but anyway, you, you wanna go into Beverly Hills with me and pick up the Christmas decorations? Okay. We can sing Christmas songs all the way there. Great! Here's one Carlton taught me. Merry Christmas! Mm-hmm. Aren't these figures outstanding? No. They're beyond outstanding. They're no. deeply beyond. No. They're hand-carved. We import them from Poland. They're dumb. Let me show you something that we're doing right now that's deeply happening. <laughs> what does that even mean? Like, it's you a said a bunch of words Christmas and made that into no it's sense at all. It's very big in London. It's beyond big. It's all about very hot oranges and very intense yellows. Well, we're just picking up the decorations for my mother, Mrs. Banks. Yeah. She phoned and she told me that you'd be putting them up yourselves this year, which is fine. You'll save yourself a little money. Is uh, this the wreath for the door? Yeah. Let's talk about that wreath for a moment, if you will. It's scary looking. Last year, I was so deeply into the distant salmons and the sandy beiges. But this year, I went more with the muted roses, with these little arrogant touches of celadon and periwinkle. They all look dead. I think it worked out quite nice. <laughs> no. Ashley, these decorations are whack. Look, we're going to save Anviv a lot of money and buy them somewhere else, all right? Let's go. Excuse me. You forgot your box of decorations. Uh, no. Well, you see, we're going to do our own decorations this year. It's going to be about arrogant little elves and <laughs> rambunctious reindeer. I think it'll be... Deeply, deeply dope. I still have 30 papers to grade. Look, we're both very busy, but we can't work in the car, so why don't we just take this time to relax a bit? You're right. There's white lights in the tree outside. Huh? Mm, just the right touch of lights. A little goes a long way, you know? <laughs> God, I used to love Christmas when I was little. Now it just rushes by in one big blur. Mm. You know, even though we're busy, I think we should do something nice for Will. Must be hard for him spending Christmas in a strange place. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right, sweetheart. We'll do something nice for him. <laughs> there it is. <laughs>
That's how you do it. Okay, maybe a little bit overboard. Surprise! Ashley, sweetie. Where's Will? Aren't you surprised, Mommy? Where is Will? I had so much fun today with Will, you can't believe it. You know, so me and Ashley, we went down to the pick and grab. You saw our lights. <laughs> the blinking Frosty the Snowman is riling your attack dogs. Oh. Well, that's wonderful. I bet there's a lot of neighbors that love those decorations. I mean, certainly anyone who possesses good taste. Here we go. <laughs> Banks residents, have a holly jolly Christmas. <laughs> my brother, you got a problem with my lights? Why don't you come tell me that to my face then? Hey, we can do whatever you want to do. It's your world, squirrel. I'm just trying to get a nut. Oh, my God. What? What? Oh, we can do this. Whatever's clever, Trevor. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Madam, sir, a group of your neighbors have assembled on the front lawn. Oh They're looking at God. your Christmas decorations and growing enraged. They're threatening to burn Frosty in effigy. Oh my God. We better get out there. Christmas is a great time to be decorating. Jeffrey, thanks for helping us put up those Christmas decorations. Yeah, man, I'd have exactly. never had the guts to climb up on that roof with that reindeer strapped on my back. <laughs> Anything in the name of Christmas, Master William. I think it's best we avoid eye contact for the rest of the evening. Solid plan. 10-4. Should I talk to them or do you want to? Oh, no, I'll give it a try. Dad, can I offer a suggestion? Sure. No. Well, they're our neighbors and they're upset. And it's up to us to make sure that this doesn't ruin their Christmas. I think we should write a few checks. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Carlton. <laughs> As you wish, Father. I'm just going to have to tell them we'll take those decorations down as soon as we can. Well, can't we at least leave some of them up? Oh, I don't know. Maybe we can reach a compromise. All right, everybody? I'm afraid potential buyers aren't too crazy about the Kmart look. You know, dear, there are wonderful services that will come and decorate your house for you. Yes, I know, but this year our daughter and nephew decided to do the decorating themselves. Oh, I see. Are they very angry with you over something? Well, this just reminds me of the summer my daughter Amanda turned 15 and tried to burn our house down. Master William, there is a gentleman in the fire who claims you had some harsh words with him on the phone. I could tell by the sound of this guy's voice on the phone, I could take him in a minute. He's a big dude, isn't he? Oh. Mr. Evander Holyfield. <laughs> the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> oh, God. Will, just run. Just run. You the chump I talked to on the telephone. Phone? I ain't talking to you on no phone. <laughs> Evander. Henry. You know her? <laughs> Where were you last night at Bruce Willis party? Uh, I'm not speaking to Bruce. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. Anyway, what are you doing here? Frankly, I saw the lights and I thought they was a little tacky. I didn't mean for everybody to get so upset. You might as well just take all the lights down. Ashley. It's okay, Dad. That's not fair. Not Ashley. at all. You know, who cares what they think? But you Santa thinks it's nice. Look, I know you're trying to get me into the Christmas spirit, but I'm just not into it. I'm gonna go up to my room, learn some new words, and wait until New Year's. you guys they like to choose one house as the best decorated and then sing christmas carols for the people who live there and this year you guys won 
We drove all over. Yeah, and usually this neighborhood is a complete dud. <laughs> we weren't even gonna come here until Jimmy saw the house from the freeway. <laughs> it's that bright. Hey. Well, I tell you nice. what, we got a lot of cookies and hot chocolate inside. You guys come on in. Yeah! Ashley, I seem to remember you saying you wanted some friends, and there they are. Still don't believe that there's a Santa Claus? Well, I'm glad we cleared up this little matter. I've changed my mind. I want the lights to stay up. Fight the power, Ashley. <laughs> it's their house. They should be allowed to have I lights wherever them. they want. They're beautiful. And when I look at the lights and the reindeer and the decorations, it makes me feel very... Ebullient. Yeah, me too. Personally, I think the lights are, uh, kind of neat. <laughs> I guess they're really not hurting anybody. And the kids really like them. We shouldn't be fighting. It's so barbaric. <laughs> <laughs> That's ironic. I meant from you. <laughs> then we're all agreed? I think those decorations are totally inappropriate for a home in Bel Air. Well, guess Madam, what? Then you don't have to live in Bel Air. This has arrived. Oh, great. That's all we need. Excuse me. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi there, Hillary. Who's that? Thanks for the pretzels. I'm, I'm sorry to bother you, neighbor. I, I just want to say that I... Yes, I greatly admire your, your wonderful Christmas decorations, and I just wanted to say that, you know, because... Nancy Am I supposed to know who that is? Is that supposed to be Thank the Reagans? You, Mr. President. As a matter of fact, a few of our neighbors came by to tell us about our lights, too. Oh. What were you saying, Mr. Gray? Well, I was just saying they were absolutely magnificent, Mr. Yes, President. What I think, yes. But now, you know, this is what Christmas is all about. This is one of our Christmas traditions. You know, I like to sit and watch Falcon for this certain commercial. A commercial? Yeah, you know, you know the one where it's all snowy and the little jolly Santa's riding around on the Relco shaver? Oh, I love that commercial. And I always love that commercial where the little covered wagon is being chased by the dog across the kitchen floor. <laughs> hey, he's on the shaver! All right, so that was part five of season one for Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Gotta say, pretty good episodes. I think my favorite one might have been the Christmas one just because Ashley needed to learn the spirit of Christmas and how great it actually can be. And I feel like she didn't experience that as much until Will came along. Episode 14 was okay for me. I didn't really care for it as much. Um, just because it felt more like a filler type of episode. And then episode 13 was pretty great as well uh, with Will knowing... Hillary's secret of not being in college anymore. I am wanting to see more of Hillary's uh, character arc and her development and everything. You know, if she's not gonna be in college, she's gonna find a job. That's what uh, Uncle Phil told her. And I like the fact that like they're making her kind of as a character that questions her future and what she actually wants for her life. And I'd like to see where she goes with that. Maybe she'll choose something really, really cool. Maybe she won't have to go to college at all. Who knows? I don't know what's gonna happen, but I hope you guys enjoyed that reaction. If you'd like to watch my full-length reaction, like I said at the beginning of this video, go ahead and check the link down in the description for my Patreon, okay? Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will see you all next time. Remember, everybody, stay totally terrific. Bye.